hello 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 gentle viewers um today is just gonna be like a regular day i'm not doing any special recordings or anything like that no great intro or anything i really wanted to talk about some of the things that are difficult with trying to start on youtube and then also trying to take something that kind of started off as a little thing that you kind of fell into which was thrifting and then trying to resell so i just wanted to kind of touch bases on that because i don't think people give other people a realistic view because most of the people that you find online are established they've done it for years and they found a way to be successful with it but then you have people who are starting off and they have no idea what they've jumped into so before we get started can we just take a minute to enjoy this wonderful thrift file and find that i found okay all right so let's go with thrifting first I kind of fell into thrifting. I've always done a little thrifting here or there, a couple of times, maybe a year, if that. Um, generally, when I first started thrifting, I was a kid, and I would save my pennies so I could thrift teddy bears, because I wanted the biggest teddy bears I could find. And I found them at thrift stores, because I would go with my mom. My mom was a thrifter, and she loved getting books. She went thrifting for books, not for other things, just books. So, um, so I've pretty much grown up with going at thrift stores and whatnot but in May I decided that I wanted to redecorate my room and I wanted to do so in a budget friendly way so I was like you know what these furniture stores are out of control these prices are too much um, let me see what I can find at a thrift store because I just wanted like trinkets and little things that represented the theme that I was looking for. And I was like, okay, I'll try to thrift the situation out. Went thrifting and I was like, whoa, this is amazing. Like, I'm one of those people who go to Target and Walmart and I get the clearance stores, shop, clearance aisles first. And before they even had the clearance store, the clearance aisles, I was the one who knew to go to the back of the aisles, the facing aisles, so that you could get the discounts on stuff. I love a deal. I love catching things on, de on deals because I like to use my money to travel. So the less I have to pay for something that I'm going to use on a daily basis or whatever, the better it was for me because I could use my money that, you know, people paying full price for put my money to the side and I use it to do my traveling and so um, catching a third a deal are you kidding me that's like the best thing ever so going to a thrift store and I'm like oh my gosh I'm finding I'm I was shocked I didn't think I was gonna be able to find the things that I was looking for for my room at a thrift store and I'll be doggone if I was finding it and it was like two dollars three dollars four dollars five dollars furniture little tables little in 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 tables and side tables like under twenty dollars and i'm like oh and they were neat they were not in bad condition they weren't like all torn up it wasn't all dusty and dirty and things and then i'd be doggone if i didn't find on one of my first stops at the thrift store a desk I've always wanted my whole life, a roll top desk. And when I saw roll top desk, roll top desks were always expensive because I was always looking for them at the stores, general stores. Well, I wasn't even looking for them because this was something I wanted as a teenager because I like to write, I like to journal. And when I found this roll top and I saw the price, I was hooked. <laughs> I was hooked on thrifting um, because it was finding a deal every time you turned around and it just gave you like a, um, I don't know, it just uh, feel good. It just felt good. And as I was finding things that I enjoyed, 
you know, I would continue to go thrifting. And then I found, I said, oh, let me try this antique mall situation. And I never really went for the antique thing because I always thought that antiques malls were out of my price range. Like, for real. I'm not a big spender on things. If I can catch a good quality item on a, for a good price, I'm hooked. Went to an uh, antique mall and I was shocked because this it comes in all different price um, price points. So you would have the expensive antiques, but then you would have stuff that you, you know, that I would consider buying because like I said, I like to, I'm frugal. Go ahead, I'll just say it, I'm frugal. And, um, and I was like, okay, this is the next thing. I'm, I'm loving the antique malls because every booth has something different. And oh, I was in, I was in, I don't know, heaven. And as time progressed, I was working on my room and I was finding the things for my room. And I found all the things that I pretty much needed for my room. And I got a little sad because what do I do now? Because thrifting and going to antique malls and garage sales and things like that, it was like a high for me. And I didn't want to stop because it was one of the few things in my life that brought me joy. Now I'm older, okay? And you know, is my family has been my life. And now my family is matured and doing their thing and I need to find things that, you know, are things that I can do and that I can enjoy. And journaling was one of those things. And now thrifting has become one of those things. And I said, you know what? <clears throat> there has to be a way that you can thrift and journal and not end up looking like a hoarder. It has to be something. And then I found out this thing called reselling. You buy the stuff, you post the stuff online, and hopefully it sells for more than what you bought it for, and you make a profit. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, somebody has found what I need to do for the rest of my life because I could do this every week. I could literally do this every week and I would love it. So I started watching some of the resale videos and I'm sitting here looking at people who say they bought this for $3 and they sold it for $100. They bought this for $10 and they sold it for $90. And I'm like, what the hell on it? Why are people buying, first of all, why are people buying this stuff for that much money when these people are telling you they bought this for $3? Why are, you, is, are other people turning around and buying this stuff with this elevated price? And I was like, well, hey, if they're going to do it, let me join in on it too. So I was like, okay, I thought I would start and I would get on YouTube and I would kind of do my little YouTube thing, um, expressing my passion because I found a passion um, and see how it goes. All right, so here are the things that I found that are difficult about YouTube and difficult about reselling. One, everybody starts with zero. You don't jump in, make a video, and think it's gonna go viral, and then you're gonna end up with all these subscribers, and then you're gonna be monetized, and all this stuff is gonna happen like within six, six months, three months. Two, three months, yeah. Cause I was seeing some people that were saying, I got monetized in three months. I got monetized in four months. Um, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I'm gonna say that it probably happens for a few people, that that's probably exactly what happens. I started, like I started thrifting in May of this year, which is 2024. And I wasn't doing it to make a profit. I was doing it to do decor for my room on a budget. And then as I was doing my room, I was like, oh my gosh, other people might wanna see how to do this. So why don't you get on YouTube and showcase your video? But I didn't really wanna be on camera. <laughs> Like, I think that when you're on camera, you're like open to people making comments or, and they could be negative and they could be positive and nah, I didn't want to get into that. So I just thrifted and thought, okay, keep doing that. But then I thought, you know, there has to be a way to make money from this, like I said before. And yeah, okay. Everybody starts at zero. You don't wake up one day, shoot one video, put it on YouTube and then you blow up. Maybe some people do, 
but that's really not the case. I think that sometimes you have to put and make a realistic plan for yourself, kind of like dieting. You didn't gain 50 pounds. You didn't gain 50 pounds in one night. Don't think you're gonna lose 50 pounds in one night. It's a process. It takes a while. So I, when I started off, I said, okay, I'm gonna give myself a year. Of course, it hasn't been a year yet. Of course, we, I started in May. I didn't even start the YouTube thing until I don't know, maybe August. Maybe August. Okay, maybe August. I started. Well, I did YouTube like back. Then. I did a video or two like years ago, but uh, it, it wasn't for me. So um, that's just a rewind, a little backstory. So I said, okay, I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna give myself a year um, to kind of work my way, learn the different things, get back into the editing, because editing sucks. Up, that's a point that you should know. Editing takes a long time. And if you like to edit, if you like to cut videos and put in a little, all of the transitions and all of that stuff and you have the time to do it, it's fun. But if you're working full time, you're making a video, it's not fun. You're sitting there like Saturdays and Sundays are my days off. And you're sitting there for three hours, four hours trying to edit a video. And when you're first starting off, which you can see from my videos, they suck. <laughs> the editing part sucks. Like I had these wonderful ideas, but I try to throw it together and it doesn't always turn out the way you want to. A couple of times I filmed stuff and the camera filmed it upside down. So yeah, editing sucks so bad. Unless you're like into technology, then hey, then editing is going to be your thing. But for me, no, I hate it. That's the one thing I wish I could outsource. But because I'm just starting, I don't have the money to outsource. You know, I should check to see how much it costs to outsource to have somebody edit because the editing part is the worst part for me. But anyway, um, getting back to the story, you don't start off with like 500 viewers and 500 hours and you probably won't get monetized right off the bat but what I am gonna do is I'm going to follow this lady who claims that she got monetized in four three months 12 weeks and um, I'm gonna follow her system and I'm gonna bring you guys along for the ride to see if it makes any changes to what I'm doing on YouTube and to see if it increases my hours of watch time and my subscribers so i'm going to follow her program and i'm going to see if it works and i'm going to bring you guys with me um along the way but i started with zero zero subscribers zero watch hours blah. and i think i started this back in maybe july august i have to look and it is october is it october it's september it's september so i've been doing this if I start in July, August, September, maybe two months, I have 43, maybe 44 subscribers. And I don't know how many watch hours I have. Not that many. So I'm going to follow her program to see. And so that's one of the downfalls. You don't get subscribers with one video. Maybe you get, I get a few. You don't get the watch hours to be monetized with one video. It's just not going to happen. So, well, it might happen for a a rare few but I'm not expecting that I'm trying to keep everything positive because I want to only breathe positive vibes into this but I do want you to know that you have to have realistic expectations because I don't know I've done I've trying to do two to three videos a week and some of the videos get a lot of watch to me I'm excited about it and some of the videos don't and so I'm going to take the ones that don't out of the pile and squish them away but you put in work for that you put in three to four hours on one video and then you find that your video is only like six minutes 10 minutes 15 minutes and you need no you need to get it longer so anyway that's one of the downfalls and it takes a while to film and um it takes a, a minute to try to figure out what you want to put on film you also have to know about the SEO keywords and what's trending. And then people tell you, try this app, try that app, try this, try that. This is going to help you here. This is going to help you there. So there's a lot of research and a lot of background that you have to go into in order to be, I guess, successful. Now, going into reselling, this is something that I just started as well. I just started reselling August. And... Um, I love going to the thrift stores and looking for deals, but this is what's happening. I'm looking for things and I'm having to research because I'm not into, 
I've never been into name brand clothing and things like that. I always kind of picked out what I liked and what I, you know, I wasn't going to spend like a lot of money on something that was name brand when I know I could get the same. I, I did tell you guys that I was frugal, that I could get the same kind of shirt, nice quality, it's going to last me for years and spend a third of what they're selling in the mall. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I've never known much about name brand clothes. I know some things that are name brand and what to kind of look for. But I didn't know what sold online. So that gave me things that I had to kind of think about. And then when I started watching some of these resellers, I was surprised that a lot of them are men. And they're selling things that I would have never thought about selling. They're selling car parts and audio parts and things like that. And I don't know anything about that. So when you decide to do your reselling, I think you should do something that you're interested in. And then also make sure that you have knowledge of it. Because like I said, I'm not like a big clothing name brand person. So, you know, I know Nikes are cool, Jeezy's are cool. I don't even know if those are in fashion now because he's messing up in the world. Um, I like Adidas. I like, I grew up with Adidas. I grew up with, you know, Fila and that kind of stuff. And now they got all these name brand stuff. Every time, every, all these people who make their own quote unquote clothes is you like, Oh, this is, I don't even know who this person is anymore. So anyway, you have to do your research because you need to know what sells. In order for you to know what sells, it's kind of like touch and go. So I am a dark academia person. I didn't even know that was a thing. I don't know if you watched my video, but I had no idea that what I liked actually had a name to it. And it's called dark academia. And it brings me joy. And so when I was going thrifting, I was looking for things that fit into the dark academia aesthetic. Didn't know that was what it was called, but hey. And so when I started thinking about reselling, I was like, oh, resell what you like. And as a matter of fact, I met a, a lady at the thrift store and she resells. And she told me that she got into it because her husband died or her mother died. Somebody in her family passed away and she wanted to make things easier for her children so she started reselling her stuff in a garage sale items that she no longer used so that if when she passed away her children wouldn't have to be burdened with getting rid of her stuff so she only wanted to keep the things that she was you know using and you know things like that but our little extra stuff she wanted to sell and get rid of so that her her children wouldn't have to be burdened with that. I was like, you know, that's a wonderful thing. And she said, but then she was selling her stuff and then she was finding that it was kind of fun. So she started coming to thrift stores and buying things and selling them. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's what I'm trying to do. So I listened to her talk about and some of the things that she said she did to kind of be successful. And I was like, you know what? I'll try the same. The only difference is I didn't start with stuff at my house. I went to thrift stores and I started because I told you I found a passion about it and a love of doing it. I'm like, I'm gonna go to the thrift store and I'm just gonna buy stuff that I think might sell. So I started buying stuff. And let me tell you, I told you I didn't like editing, right? You gotta do all this stuff to resell. You got to measure armpit to armpit. You got to measure length of your, your stuff, your sleeves. You got to measure from here to down so people will know how long is the shirt. Will it fit? Because an extra large in this particular brand is not the same as an extra large in this particular brand. And some things you find at the thrift store was probably an extra large back in the day. And an extra large back in the day is like a medium now. I kid you not. I kid you not. So people who like vintage items and vintage clothes, they're wanting to know the measurements. So they can see if they can actually fit or buy or whatever they're doing, whatever they're trying to get for what you're selling. So there's a lot that goes into it. You don't just take a couple of pictures, put it online and say, okay, that's it. Because I got burned. I found two really nice items. I think I spent like $3 on them. I put them on eBay and they sold rather quick. And I was like, oh, that's great. I'm one, I'm excited. And then come to find out, I'm looking in those items that I priced for like $20. Cause I thought, you know, hey, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take whatever I, I pay for it. I'm gonna multiply it by three because one is to pay myself 
<laughs> one is to make back what I made, and then one, the three, so you get it by three. Um, one is to put back so that I can, um, you know, keep doing this. So whatever, I, whatever I saw, it was twenty dollars. So that was a three. I probably rounded up just a little bit because you know eBay takes a percentage. You have to pay for taxes. And you ready for this? When I, I don't know if eBay is doing it now, but I think Macari is. I think maybe eBay is doing it now. But like I said, I've only been doing this for a couple of months. The shipping. You are paying for the shipping until the buyer, till you get, you get reimbursed. But you're paying for the shipping. That's why they asked for your credit card on your first sale. I didn't know that. So you're out of money until the buyer replenishes the money for the shipping. Um, because you can decide how long um, you want to do your payout. So now, um, so basically, my first sales, I was paying for the shipping and then I was getting reimbursed for the shipping. So, okay, I'm out of a little bit. And I know that about when you start a business, you may not be successful your first year. You might break even, you might be under what you put into the business versus what you bring out. I'm aware of that. I took a couple of business classes in college. I know the expectations and to just be prepared for it because like me, I prepare for the worst. So I'm prepared for the worst, okay? I want the best to happen, but I'm prepared for the worst so I can have my things ready in case I need to do that. So I sold it for $20 and then I ended up making like hardly that much, not much that profit. And then I found out that the items that I have posted, I posted too low because they were actually selling for like $40. And I missed out on a $20 deal, 20 more dollars extra because I didn't know the value of what I was selling. That's something you need to know, okay? So now it takes even longer for me to post because now I'm having to take my items, do Google Lens, research to see how much they're selling for, and go from there. And I'm like, okay. So now that's taking even longer to post. So people are saying, oh, you need to post 10 to 20 items for sale every day. So you hit the algorithm. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. eBay, Poshmark, and Macari, and all this other stuff have algorithms like Instagram. That sucks because um, I'm not on Instagram like a whole bunch. I'm never gonna meet that the, the algorithm for that. So I gave up on that. And now I'm thinking, okay, I don't know if I'm gonna be, be able to post 10 or 10, 10 items, 20 items a day to get to this algorithm so that my clothing or whatever pops up on the screen for other people to buy. So that's another thing for you to consider. Do you have the time to devote to, if it's YouTube, the editing, the filming, the researching of the SEO keywords, the tags, and finding the apps that work for you, that give you the information that you need to make it a shorter process, okay? Do you have the time to devote to reselling in which you have to go out and shop? I like that part. Find good deals, I like that part too. But then I have to research all the things to see how much items are selling for so that I can price my things appropriately. So I think what I'm going to do this week actually is I'm just going to start off because I have a lot of things that I bought. And it takes a, long, a while to like take the photographs, use your little yardstick or your measuring tape, whatever you're using to take the pictures of it. And the research, I think this, this week I'm going to try something a little different. I'm just going to do all of that not research it post it for a certain amount of money and then i'm gonna go right back and then i'm gonna research it so i can edit and make change the price and then you can and there's another thing that you can buy that um i think it's called venmo or vendo vendmo where you can post on one of your sites and then it'll help you upload and keep track of your items on other reselling sites but what they're not telling you is you still have to go in for each 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 site that you're using and you have to put in like the size and the tags and you know what's your lowest price that you'll take you're still doing that for each item so the thing that venmo is actually doing actually is the time that they're saving is they're uploading your pictures and you already have like a framework for each one so you're saving a little bit of time doing that but you're still having to do things for every single place that you're um, trying to resell your item. 
So that's something to consider. So there's some things to take into consideration and now I have a bunch of stuff. I have a, I have two boxes and a couple of bags full of items that I need to resell, I need to sell. And so you buy all of these things and you don't know if they're gonna sell or not. And you have to have a place to house them. And you have to have a place to organize them so that when it does sell, you know where to find it so that you can go in, grab it, wrap it up, stick it in a bag, and ship it off. So that's another thing to consider. So I know I've talked about a lot, but I wanted to say that it's not all bells and whistles. YouTube has a lot of things to consider if you're going into you know, shooting YouTube videos and trying to get monetized that way. And then reselling has a lot of things for you to consider from getting your materials to posting them online and then you have to just kind of sit back and wait. Will your item sell? Posting in many places will help. But I don't want anyone to go in with the expectation that it's going to be an overnight deal. You're going to be successful overnight because I don't think that's going to happen. I think it depends on what you're doing on YouTube and the quality of how you're selling and marketing what you're doing on YouTube and any other business that you go into. So I just wanted to take a few minutes, do a little personal vlog, which by the way, is what one of the three things that this lady said you should do. And she got monetized in 12 weeks. So here we go. This is my first video following her guidelines. And I'm going to kind of elaborate and go into these guidelines in two weeks. Okay. So in two weeks from now, you'll have an updated kind of personal montage of I followed this for two weeks what has increased what's remained the same what my expectations were and how that all kind of process went out and i will go into that a little bit later but thank you for joining me and if you stuck around this long please like subscribe share and use the comment section but i will tell you that yes i have made some sales as a reseller um like i said i've only been doing this for about two months but i have more of a supply than I have a demand for. So I'm having to figure out what to do with the things that I have because I live in a, a small little space. I'm not sure, um, I have to figure that part out. And I also have to figure out, do I continue to buy things or am I just gonna start now going through all the things that I have personally because I do, I have a lot of items that still have tags on them that one, I can't wear anywhere anymore because I've lost weight, so I can't even wear the, the things that I was putting up. And I have a lot of items that I just, you know, don't want anymore. And you can sell them because if somebody else might want them. So that's my dilemma right now. And then as far as YouTube is concerned, I'm going to try my best to do the three videos, two to three, because she said there's two major ones that you need to do. And then this third optional one, which is what I'm doing right now, um, that you might not have to do but you could still become monetized in three months so let's follow her thing using what i do which is all dark academia well not all dark academia i like all the different aesthetics because this one is not dark academia this is more like cottage core kind of grandma she kind of oh we out in the country with the sunflowers and all the things um but yeah let's see how that works and i'm uh, not going to update about that for another two weeks because i want to give it an opportunity to see if what she suggests can work for somebody else who's doing it in a different theme because her theme is actually being monetized so that is her her whole thing is finance and i think that finance is probably one of those themes or one of those topics that you can become monetized with a whole lot easier than something like what I'm doing, which is like all within the um, being into an aesthetic and mental health and um, which is kind of my my thing. So anyway, if you stuck along this long, like, subscribe, comment, tell me what your thoughts about this because it's not all pretty.
it is not all pretty It's a lot of work you have to do behind the scenes and nobody tells you that and nobody tells you that hey you might sell two items one week and then the next week you sell nothing and then the weekend pops up and for some odd reason you got five sales and i'm not that's what happened to me so yeah it is what it is till I, until i see you again keep dreaming and stay whimsical my people bye dear viewers <laughs>